Hey guys, it's Nick, and in this video, I want to talk about what's going on with Zillow. Now, their stock recently took a pretty big hit on the news that they are stopping their home buying program called Zillow Offers until the end of the year when they try to get rid of some of this inventory that they have. Now, they say the reason they're doing this is because they're having a hard time getting labor in different markets to do the work on these houses that they need to fix up a little bit before they put them on the market for sale. Oddly enough, the other iBuying companies are not having this problem, it seems, because they are still continuing with their program. So is Zillow really having labor problems, or is their AI algorithm figuring out early before anybody else that the housing market is cooling off and they're trying to get rid of their inventory before they have to drop prices too much? So I'm going to talk a little bit about how the Zillow program works and how they make their money. And I'm going to look at some Zillow home listings in the Tampa, Florida area and show you some really weird things going on with their listings that make it look like the housing market is cooling off a lot quicker than they are saying or that they have been overpaying for a bunch of these houses. So let's go take a look. So because of this news on their labor shortage woes, Zillow was down over 9% on Monday. Now, this article says that Zillow offers business that launched only a few years ago has become enormously profitable, saying that they had about $772 million in revenue in the second quarter, and that made up 59% of the company's revenues. Now, how much of that revenue is actually profit? Because in this article, it says last year, meaning 2020, according to Zillow's public reports, its home flipping business lost $66 million. And a study of Zillow's fourth quarter reports by the Real Estate Technology Center at the University of Colorado shows after operational expenses, Zillow lost $72,000 for every home it purchased and sold. That's an improvement, according to Mike Delpret, a resident scholar at the Technology Center who estimates that Zillow lost $129,000 per house in the third quarter. So are they really slowing down because of this labor problem or they're trying to kind of stem some losses, especially if they realize that the market is starting to cool and don't want to be held with a whole bunch of inventory that's going down. So this Barron's article says the biggest question for investors is whether the temporary retreat is an opportunity for rivals or a sign of broader supply struggles that other iBuyer businesses must also navigate. So the COO of Zillow said, we have not been exempt from these market and capacity issues, and we now have an operational backlog for renovations and closings. Pausing new contracts will enable us to focus on sellers already on their contract with us and our current home inventory. So Zillow bought 1,856 homes in the first quarter and 3,800 homes in the second quarter. So how does Zillow make money buying and selling these homes? Do they only make money from the difference in what they bought it from to what they sold it for? No, not really. So first off, they charge a 6% sales fee to the seller. Now that's normally what a real estate agent will usually charge a seller, but even then a real estate agent usually has to split it with another agent who brings a buyer. So Zillow is pocketing that whole 6% every time they buy a house from someone. So Zillow offers a very quick cash offer. So people who may be in a hurry to sell might be willing to take a little bit less from Zillow than take the risk of putting it on the market for a while and waiting, trying to get a buyer. And on the flip side, Zillow is also very flexible on the closing date. So they can give you a quick cash offer, but you could say, I don't want to move out until three months from now or something. They will accommodate you. Zillow also charges the seller a 1% to 2% closing fee, which covers title, escrow, and transfer tax. And they also demand a service charge of about 2.5%, and that makes up for taxes, maintenance work, and utilities. So all told, Zillow takes about 10% of the purchase price right off the top and puts the large majority of it right in their pocket. So even if they don't sell the house for a lot, they still already made some profit, and they also have a mortgage division, so hopefully they can sell a mortgage product to the person who is buying the house from Zillow. So potentially they're making 10% on the purchase price. Hopefully they're making a profit on the house from where they bought it to where they sold it. And then they may be making origination fees and mortgage fees from selling a mortgage to the new buyer. 
And they also get the money to buy all these houses at really low interest rates. So instead of being a retail buyer and having to get a new mortgage and closing costs every time you buy a house, they offer out a bond issue to investors at really low rates and get hundreds of millions of dollars in one shot that they can use to buy these houses. And the unsold houses are collateral for these bonds. On top of that, they also have credit facilities with people like Credit Suisse and Goldman Sachs for less than 3% rate. So put all those things together and it could be a pretty profitable business for them in either a flat or a rising market, but it's yet to be seen how this business is going to work in a falling market, especially if it's a quickly falling market. So let's take a look at some of their listings in the Tampa, Florida area. Looking at what they paid for these houses, what they're trying to sell them for, and how quickly they drop the price if it doesn't sell, kind of an indication that maybe things are not as good as they seem to be in the housing market, especially in the Florida area. Now, if you didn't know, you can actually search by Zillow owned homes that are move in ready homes evaluated and repaired by Zillow. So it's kind of like a certified pre owned car that BMW or Mercedes may try to market to say that these cars are a little bit better because they have our stamp of approval that we went through them and fixed whatever problems there were so you don't have to worry. This is kind of a little bit what Zillow seems to be trying to do as well. So here's a home for 198,000 three bedroom, two bath in Port Ritchie, Florida. Okay, not too bad looking inside. It's old looking, but it looks like maybe they put a new carpet, but the bathrooms are old 1970s uh, this one is a little bit newer nothing spectacular but let's see what Zillow paid for it and what they're selling it for so Zillow paid 198,000 on September 24th two days later this home was already evaluated repaired and prepared for listing by Zillow partners so they did that two days right after they bought it. They must not have done very much to it. So anyway, they listed it for sale less than they actually bought it for. And in a few days, they had a pending sale, a buyer at that price. But apparently that fell through and now it's still for sale. So they're basically selling this for no money or losing a little bit. Here's a two bedroom, two bath, 200,000 in Lakeland. Okay, inside looks all right. Old bathroom, pink tiles, of course. This is like 1970s kind of stuff. So they really don't do much to these places. And you see, July 7th, it was sold to Zillow for 204400 On the 28th, it was evaluated and fixed up, blah, 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 listed for sale for 232000 And it hasn't sold in all this time. And they have been lowering the price, lowering the price to the point where they are selling it for less than they actually paid for it. So they have it listed for $5,000 less than they actually paid for it. Here's another one in Port Ritchie, two bedroom, two bath, $210,000. And it's not a very nice looking house. The inside is very dated, right? So they really, again, did not do much to this house. You got your pink tile bathrooms, of course, and these old green tile bathrooms and whatnot. So it looks like maybe they put a carpet in. Now Zillow bought this July 19th for 221,000, listed it for 246,000, and then continuously lowered the price to now it's 209,000. So it's already $12,000 less than they paid for it. So they are definitely losing money on this one. And this is my favorite one. I don't know what they were thinking on this one, but Newport Ritchie, three bedroom, two bath, $235,000. Right, and this is <laughs> look what's going on here. I don't know if these pictures are old, but there are just primer and patches and stuff in all of these rooms. <laughs> okay, in this room, this room, this room. So, did they really go through it and fix everything with their team? Looks like some water damage up here on the ceiling. But here's the funny part where I question the so called Zillow pricing AI algorithm or whatever this house was listed for sale in april 21 for 192,000. it was on the market for two months and it didn't sell and so they took it off the market and three months later they sell it to zillow 
uh, we couldn't sell it for 192 in June, so we'll raise the price by 30,000 and sell it to Zillow in September. So Zillow bought it for 225, fixed it up supposedly. <laughs> Um, didn't even bother painting these rooms. I don't know what's going on with that. Listed it for two thirty eight, and now it's listed for two thirty four nine. So, guys, what do you think about these Zillow purchases? Did they buy them correct, and the market just changed on them, or did they overpay for these, and their algorithm is not giving them the right information for the current market? Maybe these houses I picked are not really representative of all of the houses that they're selling or have sold. I did kind of cherry pick the most weirdest ones or the ones with the biggest drops in prices so i don't know if the majority of them are like that or maybe they were doing really well and now the market has changed and now they are moving quickly you try to get out of these houses and maybe continue buying later at lower prices to reflect the market change i'm not really sure so what do you think do you think the housing market is still strong and they really are struggling with these labor problems or are they kind of like the canary in the coal mine and see the market is shifting and maybe cooling off and they're trying to hurry up and get rid of their inventory? If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.